Hello everybody, this is Justin from TameType1 and today I'd like to do a special video about using syringes. What I find so far from uh, some of the coaching I've been doing is that a lot of people don't know how to use syringes at all. It's amazing to me. I grew up using syringes when I was a kid about 15 years ago, but since then doctors have moved on to pens, to pumps, and everything else in between. They aren't really doing syringes anymore. And it's unfortunate because syringes, I find, are very, very useful for low carb diabetes management. Why? Because at very low insulin doses, which, you, which is what you end up using on a low carb diet, the pens just aren't very accurate, you know? And unfortunately, a lot of people can't afford the pump. So if your option is between a pen and a syringe, a syringe is going to be better because pens at those low doses aren't consistent. You pull the needle out and you're going to see drips of insulin coming out the end. Well, if you're taking just one or two units, that could be half of your dose going out the pen right there. It's not consistent with the pen. So instead, I like to use syringes such as this um, 3 slash 10 cc syringe right here. But today... But it seems that many people don't know how to use them. And so I like to make a video about how to fill your syringes with insulin, either from a pen or from a vial. All right, let's get started with it. First, we'll do the classic, the vial. This is a vial of our insulin. You can get it from Walmart for 25 bucks with our prescription if you're in the States. And this thing around it, this white thing here, that's a vial case that you can actually find on Amazon. It's made of rubber so that if you drop it, it doesn't break. Pretty cool stuff, right? So anyways, how do you use this vial and how do you use a syringe to get the insulin we need out of it? Well, it's very simple. First, you just take off the cap right here and you take off the end right here, like so. As you can see, it goes up to well, maybe you won't be able to see it with the video, but it goes to 30 units. And let's say you want to do a, a three unit dose of our insulin for the food you're eating. First thing you do with a vial, this is for a vial specifically, we'll get to pens in a minute, because it's a little bit different. But for a vial, what you do is you first draw the syringe up to that three unit mark where you're going to want to have it, right? And then what you want to do is you want to plunge it in to the vial, press that three units down, and then flip it over so that the vial is facing going up and the syringe is going down. And that way you let gravity do the work, you pull back slowly until you hit that three mark. Now you might notice that you have an air bubble in here or something, and if that's the case, that's fine. You just push it back. You might hear a snap or like a little crack. Well, that's just the bubble going back in. And then you pull it again slowly out, and hopefully this time you won't see any bubbles. Again, if you see another bubble, just push it back again until you get that bubble out and then pull it back out until you hit that three unit mark. Now, the thing is, you always want to um, make sure the bubbles are out because if there's any bubbles in it, that must, that's gonna cause issues. You don't wanna inject air into yourself and plus, that means you're not getting as much insulin as you think you're getting. So you wanna make sure always that there's no bubbles in it. All right. So that's how you do it with a vial. You push the air back into it. That's why I drew that three units of air first and push it in there because the vial has a, um, a fixed amount of space in it. And if you're taking insulin out, well, you don't want to create a vacuum, so you need to put something back into it. In this case, you're taking out insulin, and so you put in air to compensate for that space. Three units of air for three units of insulin. Now, alternatively, let's say you draw the insulin out and you forget to do that. That's okay as long as every now and then you're plunging a syringe in there and just injecting a bunch of air into it. You want to make sure there's no vacuum. If there's a vacuum, there's going to be problems. You'll, you might notice that when you inject the syringe into the vial, that bubbles are just starting to pour in. Well, that, that would be a sign that there's a vacuum. You need to inject some air into it. Just keep that in mind. Make sure you're not making a vacuum. Now, let's say we're doing, we're going to use a different syringe because this is different insulin. Let's say we're doing a 
pen instead because you can actually use a pen as well. I tell a lot of my clients when I start out, hey, are you using pens for corrections or this or that? And they say, yes, of course. And I say, well, if you're doing low doses, pens aren't going to be very useful on their own. So instead you can use syringes. And then they're like, okay, well, do I have to give off of that? And I'm like, no, you actually don't. In fact, using a pen as a vial is better than using a vial as a vial. Why? Because pens have less capacity. Pens only hold 300 units rather than a thousand. That means if something happens, let's say the insulin goes bad or the vial breaks, you're not going to be out a thousand units of insulin. Instead, at worst, you're going to be out 300. So it's less of a loss, less risk. And better yet, if you don't go through insulin very fast like me, well, it's going, th this 300 units I'm going to be able to get to before the insulin goes bad. But with this vial, I'm not going to be able to get through the whole vial before the insulin goes bad. Okay, so I like using the vial. I like using the vials in the pens more than the vials themselves. But it is a different process for filling these with insulin. So to start, what you want to do is, of course, just like with the other syringe, you take off the cap and you take off the cap, revealing the needle. And this time you push out the air that's already in it and you don't put any air back into it. We're going to take three units from this little Traceva pen here, but we're not going to put any air into the pen. Why? Because if you're familiar with pens, you might know this, there's a plunger that goes down in the pen itself. And the pressure, the vacuum pressure from just pulling insulin out is going to push that plunger down, meaning that unlike the vial, this space is not fixed. It is not just going to stay 300 volume this whole time. When you put, when you take insulin out, this space decreases because the plunger goes down. You don't need to put any air in it. You're not going to have to worry about that vacuum. That said, you need to do it slowly because the glass in this vial is a little bit more fragile than the glass on the normal vial. And if you don't, if you go too fast, it might end up cracking the vial or it might end up creating a vacuum at the end of it while the plunger tries to catch up, leading to bubbles in the insulin itself, which isn't necessarily harmful, but you want to try to avoid bubbles in the vial too. So first let's, again, we're going to put the needle in where the needle would go, right? You're not going to have a needle in this. Just like before, we tilt it up so that the vial is facing up and the needle is facing down and then we slowly pull back the syringe until we hit three units now there might be a bubble like just like before that's okay just push it back in there and slowly pull it out again until you don't have any bubbles and you just have solid insulin and that's how you do it that is how you fill a syringe with insulin I'll go into another video about actually using a syringe. I feel like it should be, I like keeping my videos short and I feel like it's a separate topic worth discussing more in detail. But one technique at a time, I hope you learn how to tame your type one diabetes the right way, how to use the old school methods, such as the syringes, which honestly I think are better for managing diabetes than the pens and even the pumps. I like the manual route personally. If you do too, or if you'd like to try it out, you can get yourself a bunch of syringes at Walmart or another store near you, most places you don't need a subscription or a prescription. Try it out for yourself. It's really good for getting precise doses. Let's say you're doing half unit. Let's say you need a quarter of unit. You can't get that on these pens, but you can get them out of the syringe. Just keep that in mind. Syringes are really good for consistency. They're good for predictability. They're good for precise, very small doses. And once you learn how to use them, like with the help of this video and others that I'll be coming out with, you'll be able to have much better control of your diabetes like I've been able to achieve myself. That is all everyone, keep taking that type one. Whether you use vials or pens for filling syringes, again, it doesn't matter. But I believe that using pens or syringes is a completely different experience. Let me know what you think below. If you like pens more, if you like syringes more, let me know in the comments and uh, if you have any other suggestions on some of the basics I could talk about that your doctor isn't showing you, unfortunately, let me know and I'd love to talk about it. That's all for now, everyone. Keep taming that type one. And peace out.